In this presentation, we will attempt to put all the pieces together and to explain the assessment and treatment planning process. Just to repeat a few items from previous presentations throughout the semester, there are a few rules associated with completing initial assessments. Always make sure you complete the entire form. That means no blank spaces. If the item on the tool does not relate to the client, either write not applicable or if it is a handwritten assessment, draw a line through it. This will indicate that it is not relevant to the client versus a blank giving the impression that it was forgotten or missed. Also, assess the client holistically and touch every life domain. Attempt, whenever possible, to engage the client in conversation about the topics versus just a series of questions. Always complete the assessment in a private area and repeat what you have heard back to the client to ensure you have gathered all the information accurately. Make sure you are listening to the feelings and motivations behind the words and always observe body language. After you have gathered the information, use your clinical judgment to make interpretations based on the finding. To establish goals for treatment, engage the client in a conversation. Always make recommendations on which programs are designed to address the goals set by the client, but ensure the programs are realistic for the client's life. For example, many individuals enjoy and find leather crafting beneficial for problem solving, planning, fine motor skills, and cognitive stimulation. However, leather craft is an expensive hobby and therefore would not be appropriate for someone that cannot afford it as an independent hobby. Also make sure the choices are congruent with the discharge environment that the client has the space and resources available to participate in after discharge. A good rule to follow is to complete the assessment form either by hand or in the computer chart as soon as possible after the interview or assessment session. In paragraph form, the therapist will write an integrative summary, and just like it sounds, the therapist will summarize in a paragraph the findings of the assessment. Even though the information included in the form, most providers will only read your integrative summary, so make sure you are including any relevant treatment findings within that section. After the integrative summary, the therapist will write out the goals and objectives for treatment. These should have been discussed and agreed upon with the client during the interview. Always make sure you are following the rules and expectations for writing goals and behavioral objectives. If you have not done so, you should review the presentation on writing goals and objectives. After the goals and objectives have been established, the therapist will identify the strategies that will be used to achieve the identified treatment goals. Strategies include detailed description of the program or programs the client will attend, the frequency of attendance, and the session length. When the therapist has completed the entire form, always sign and date the assessment and place the form in the client's chart. This will be completed for you if you are using a computerized system. Each facility will have a set time frame for completing the treatment plan. This could also be unit specific. There are two different types of treatment plans. One is interdisciplinary, meaning that all disciplines enter information on the same plan. This type of plan takes more coordination and often has different time frames associated with completion based on each discipline. For example, when doing an interdisciplinary treatment plan, usually a psychologist or a social worker initiates the bulk of the plan. After the plan has been started, the other team members are alerted to add to the plan. The second type is called discipline-specific treatment plans, which means each separate discipline has their own plan in the chart, and these are typically completed immediately following the completion of the assessment. The Shank and Cole Chapter 8 reading provides an example of a discipline-specific treatment plan on page 133. For this class, we will be following its discipline-specific treatment plan. No matter which type of treatment plan your facility is following, all of the information included in the plan comes from the assessment. There are several key areas to include in your treatment plan. Identify the client's strengths, needs, abilities, and preferences. In a paragraph form, identify the client's treatment needs and behaviors to be targeted by treatment. 
List the agreed upon goals and objectives directly from the assessment and identify the strategies and plans for programs to help the client achieve his or her goals. So we have completed our assessment and treatment plans. Now what happens? Treatment plans typically have a review date, and again, this will be determined by the setting and facility. In general, treatment plans should be a fluid document that changes as the client meets his or her goals or as additional items become evident as treatment needs. Progress towards goals is documented in the treatment notes. If a note indicates a client has achieved the goal, then the note should also indicate the new treatment goal or plans for discharge, if the client is ready. When the client is ready for discharge, write a discharge summary note that highlights the treatment received, the client's progress towards goals, and recommendations for continued participation after discharge. I hope this brief presentation was helpful in identifying how the assessment and treatment planning process works together.